As Mark Twain said, faith is believing what you know ain't so. This is Free Thought Radio on Air America. I'm Dan Barker with Annie Laurie Gaylor, and welcome back to the second half of Free Thought Radio. We're pleased to have back on Free Thought Radio journalist and author Susan Jacoby, author of the new book, The Age of American Unreason. She also wrote Freethinkers, A History of American Secularism, among her six other books. And Susan Jacoby is a freethinker herself. Thanks for joining us today. You're right in the middle of a huge book tour for your new book, Susan. Uh, yes, a huge and exhausting book tour. And your, your book just came out a month ago, and yes. you, you were um, telling us before the show began that h- how many books have sold? Well, it sold, I, Freethinkers sold about 22,000 copies in hardcover over a four-year period. Uh, uh, the Age of America and Reason has sold much more than that in four weeks. Wow. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's the subject. I think that uh, a lot of people are... More people than I thought certainly are concerned about anti-rationalism and and just the general collapse of a lot of our cultural standards and dialogue in the last 40 years. Uh, I, there's no other reason to account for it. It's not like I'm a celebrity. <laughs> no, I, I think it's that flashy red coverage. Uh, I've seen it in magazines all the time, jumping off the page. So, uh, And I have to tell you that um, one of our staff members here in Madison, Wisconsin, is ecological and rides the bus to work every day. And she says recently she's seen your book five pe- di- five different people reading your book on the way to work. Well, we all we all know Madison is a lefty <laughs> a lefty pinko free thinking town. But <laughs> if still, I can't sell in Madison. Where can I sell? I know, but I just think that's pretty terrific. No, I wanna, that's great. I want to ask you something uh, simple here before we get into it. I must have missed something because there's this huge embossed letter R on the front. And that what stands is, for reason. For reason. I was going to guess that, although the word reason actually isn't in, oh, unreason is in your title. Right. So yeah. the R for reason. And Very good. S- and speaking of that title, it's kind of a play on Thomas Paine's Age of Reason, of course, isn't it? Right, right. I, I, I would have called it the Age of Unreason, but they wanted me to stick American in it, which was perfectly reasonable. <laughs> Because, after all, our country sort of stands out there. And, and that's what the book is about, what's happened in American culture in the last 30 years or so. And in the introduction of your book, you point out that the right wing has co-opted this term cultural conservative. So right. you're now calling yourself a cultural conservationist. That's right. You can't call yourself a cultural conservative because what that means is people who are dedicated to, to opposing gay marriage and opposing premarital sex and and protecting cancer patients from marijuana addiction. Conservation, a cultural conservationist is dedicated to preserving the best of culture from the past from <laughs> and the, the en- present. From the Enlightenment and all of that. Yes. All of that. And you, you talk, uh, I mean, there's a... Um, History itself, actually. I know you have a, a whole chapter, The New Old-Time Religion, which we want to get to, but you also talk about the different ways that America has been dumbed down by things like uh, infotainment. Well, I, I think, in fact, I think that I think that infotainment or twenty four seven infotainment culture is is the main player in the dumbing down of America. I think that it it, it affects everything and makes everything worse. This book, I should say, picks up where the great historian Richard Hofstadter's anti-intellectualism in American life leaves off, which is about 1963. And one of the major things that's different now from then is that was the very beginning of the video culture. In the last 40 years, we've witnessed the triumph of the video culture over the print culture. And the reason I say this makes everything else worse is take the new old-time religion, which by which I mean religious fundamentalism, Religious fundamentalism, there actually are no more religious fundamentalists today than there ever were. In fact, probably quite a few less. Uh, But they're more politically powerful, and they have really grasped the tools of the mass media very well. Mm -hmm. So that we we have a situation where utterly anti-irrational views, such as anti-evolutionism, because today's media is dedicated to the proposition that the truth is always equidistant between two points. So in effect, in discussions of evolution on every video forum, you'll have one person, you know, saying, in effect, saying the earth is flat and one person saying the earth is round and equal weight is given to both sides. By the media. 
Exactly. So that, so that the domination of our culture by mindless video entertainment uh, is really, has really reinforced the other anti-rational elements in our society, which have always been there. Well, there's that other irony that these people who are opposed to science are using the technological tools, the fruits of science, in order to broadcast their anti-science message. Sure, they're you know they, they've mastered they've mastered the digital world uh, in in every way and and also there's there's a third factor in here which is related to the two which is which is the general really lamentable state of public education in this country. I mean the fact is I found some horrifying things while I was writing this book. I mean for instance a geographic Roper poll that shows that uh, of Americans 18 to 25. Fewer than half can find a rock on a rack, on a map, a map with the names of the countries written in. <laughs> you know, this is this. You know, this speaks to and and we're uh, in international studies of our 15-year-olds. We're 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 last practically in math in developed nations and just mediocre in science. No, we're not. Uh, we're not the only people, obviously, affected by this infotainment culture, but. Uh, there are certain elements in our culture that make us more susceptible to it, and one of it is this this really bad school system that we've got. Uh, and another another is uh, there's a big disparity between our real our real status of our students in say science and math and knowledge of their own history, by the way, and our, the constant drumbeat that we're number one. Anybody who lives in the Midwest and has seen what's happened to the auto industry in the last 20 years knows we're not number one anymore. But um, but we have a, a kind of cultural superiority. We're very smug in this country. Yeah, there's a there's a big disparity between where we really are educationally and where and where we're told we are, which is number one, the greatest nation on earth. Sort and of blind you, patriotism. And you do point out in your book the fact that the higher you go in education, the less superstitious and the less religious you are as a group. Well, that's true. Uh, that's true that, for instance, fundamentalism, by which I mean specifically a literal interpretation of sacred books, fundamentalism is much stronger among less educated people. And by the way, that's something that nobody likes to talk about, the connection between fundamentalism and lack of education, because it sounds like it's coming from a member of the elites, but it's just a fact. The less educated people are, the more likely they are to believe in a literal interpretation of the Bible. I am not talking about religion as such. I mean, frankly, frankly, I don't think we would have any of these problems if, 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 if most of the religious people in the country were Unitarians and liberal Catholics and Reformed Jews. It's this very strong literal interpretation of the Bible strain, strain which is by definition anti-rationalist, that, in, that infects the rest of the culture. But don't mistake me. I think, by the way, that secularists and liberals have made a great mistake in blaming our national ignorance mainly on fundamentalism. Because while one-third of Americans say they believe in a literal interpretation of the Bible, two-thirds of Americans believe that both creationism and evolutionism should be taught in schools. Now, what accounts for the fact that twice as many people believe that as actually believe in a literal interpretation of the Bible? What accounts for that is the dumbing down of our culture. My guess is is that most of these Americans don't know what either creationism or evolution is. Uh, a religious poll cited by Stephen Prother in a book called Religious Literacy showed that half of Americans don't know Genesis is the first book of the Bible mm -hmm. in the supposedly most religious nation on earth. Well, yeah, so how can they know illiterate. what creationism is if they haven't even read the creation story? <laughs> they uh, just, apparently one of the books we're not reading, along with all the other books we're not reading, is the Bible itself. Oh yeah, I mean I think it's the bestseller that nobody wants to pick up for good reason, <laughs> but then why do they embrace it, you know? So in a sense you're pointing out that modern fundamentalism is a symptom of something else really. It's a symptom of something deeper in our culture. The, le the lack of education, the dumbing down of thought. Well, I think the, the persistence of fundamentalism, fundamentalism has been around uh, since the dawn of the republic. It wasn't called that until the 20th century. But what's different today is the, 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 the dissonance between the state of modern knowledge and fundamentalism. In other words, if you had people going around as you did in the mid-19th century 
saying we shouldn't go to doctors because sickness was God's punishment for sin. Well, that didn't really matter very much because medicine didn't really have very much to offer people then. But these kinds of attitudes matter a lot in a society where we know a lot more than we did then.